I know we're starting open mic right now. If you have friends that train, man, tell them to bring their hot stocks and their DD. Hey, I've got Shido. I invited Shido yeah. to be one of the speakers. Man, bring your butt up, Shido. We know we want you to talk, man. Come on. And by the way, Brett Brett Rosen will be on here April 2nd, Shido. You don't want to miss that. He said he knows you from growing up. As Shido, just to update you, man, I think we um, we uh, came down to a conclusion that we're going to keep the the each person to two minutes. They have two minutes to tell what the stock is, tell what the DD is, and then give their personal opinion. And then, then everybody else is going to have a conversation about it. So we'll cut them off at the two minute mark. So that should be a lot more um, fluid with the way it moves. Yeah, my, uh, I think my, everybody's going to really like the way that turns out. My, much better. I mean, we, we talked about that, right? A few weeks ago when some were, yeah. uh, were going much too, too detailed on this. And that's not, not fun for anybody, I think. Nope. nope. All right, guys, we'll if you're request, in the room, yeah. man, go share it. We're going to start chopping things up here. Um, Shido, just, would you start it off with one just for fun? No, I mean, I can mention the, the FLES uh, again that I mentioned uh, last spaces. Um, I, was, I was arguing that we might see Rosen come in. Uh, that's, that's happening now. Um, so far, so yep. good. Um, huge volume today, like nice dollar volume also. But uh, that, that small note guy is still there, apparently. Uh, they are still selling, um, which is okay. I mean, I hope that it's getting gobbled up by retail and that retail is really getting behind this after a while. Um, that's my hope. Uh, it looks good. I mean, Rosen said he will come in, pay off all the convertible debt uh, and after uh, what is left after the, the small, small guys are out. Um, that's what we need to see. We will still have below 20 million float, I guess. We, we need to wait for the update, but and then we we they're gonna ramp up the business and 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 if there is no convertible debt converting at all for the next I don't know nine twelve months, then there, there is a chance that something is 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 um, um, that that this will be a good thing, but we need to see. Yeah, definitely. Well, definitely from my understanding, yeah, if he's closing all that convertible debt out, they're going to be in a great position to move forward. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, we need to see the details of, of the Rosen deal. Of course, um, we need to see that. The OS will go up, apparently, obviously, because they did a lot of deals with uh, changing, converting uh, convertible debt into restricted common. It will go up the OS. But but for now, I think that the, the float is, is, is the play here uh, and the business wrapping up, the revenues wrapping up. As they said, they will. So we will see. Nothing is a sure thing, but um, it, it's a good situation. And and it's now happening. Rosen is coming in. Very simply, for those who couldn't hear, um, he's expecting Brett Rosen. The main things he wants to see out of it is Brett Rosen to come in and invite the investment capital for them to increase marketing to get the, the revenue turned on for Auto Parts for Less website and to be able to help restructure and cancel out the convertible debt and the deal he has with them, which he spoke to me today, I, I can concur on this, is restricted stock that's uh, a year out under Rule 144. So they're trying to get the stock lifted and trading a lot higher prior to that year mark so that, one, he makes more money, and two, the company does better. And that's, the, that's really what's happening with the Brett Rosen deal and FLES. Perfect. Well, thank you, Long Bully Stick. We got a, another uh, request here. Uh, we did from stock awareness but now i see it's disappeared so we'll see if wolf of wall street's in the house man you better come up and talk about a stock wolf don't play is this the real one i don't know there's a bunch of fakes out there but if it's the real one let me see uh it might be one of the generic accounts well i'll tell you guys if about it's a real wolf of wall street about a new reverse <laughs> merger that that happened today on bhpa um so this this deal just uh, closed today uh just around a penny and this is a Taiwanese company that has a, a bunch of a business in the hydrogels. So they're called Aquiva Medical. And they're going to be, uh, the, the, the old BHPA business is gone. They're going to be operating as Aquiva now. Um, so, you know, it seems like they have a bunch of uh, product, biotech type products for uh, skin care and hydrogels. So uh, I did pick some up because it basically lives at this price. With you know 37 million unrestricted around 01, I mean it could really take off. And I mean the one thing I always regretted in this OTC is not picking up a few reverse mergers. Sometimes I went, oh well, it's boring, no one will like it, and then boom, 
You know what I mean? So, so I, that's a new thing that I got today. Hey. All right, let's get, uh, so that's All my right. pitch. I'm done. That's it. How about so your pitch is BHPA? BHPA, brand new reverse merger, just hit today. Awesome. All right, two minutes is the new deal. Two minutes to pitch. Yeah, it, no, I was then... looking. Uh, gra- so grapefruit GPFT. We've worked for them three years off and on. It seems to be some type of life there. Went up fifty one percent today. It's been dead for a while. Not sure what's going on. We're not sure if it has something to do with. Uh, I don't know if you are following Constellation Brands, you know, the people that make Modelo and Corona and all that, but they own 38% of CGC Canopy. And Canopy is forming a new company called Canopy USA that's coming to the U.S. They're doing a proxy vote April 14th, uh, and they've pretty much made it clear they're coming after all to buy and take out any small companies that are in the marijuana hemp cbd space everything so you might i posted something about it but you might want to research it pft is in the space and has a product called hourglass that they sell to cream so uh that's all i know about it i just noticed it was moving Uh, perfect yeah we'll keep an eye on it and I mean, what a throwback. You know, that reminds me of Justin Costello and that whole <laughs> world. I mean, man, oh, man. And like I remember when Apple I was Express. telling people you should buy that GRNF at point zero zero two eight. People were like, man, get over it. It's boring. <laughs> and then here, then, then it went to two bucks. But like by COVID standards, it wasn't even that big of a move. I mean, it's- he wants to talk about IGP. He wants to talk. He wanted to address IGP. Okay, well, let's do it then. Go All ahead. Right. Stock awareness. Tell us. About IGPK, um, I had I had a comment on that specifically. I don't know if y'all saw the tweet I put out, but Eric Newland, who claims through the TA that he is the Chinese company's attorney, who he was Gene, the ex CEO's personal attorney, but he he has claimed, and he's the one that posted that update to their website, right? So my question is, has anybody called Eric Newland? and said, you're the attorney, did you post this? Because if he acknowledges that he posted that on the website, then that pretty much tells you that this is real and they're coming forward. I mean, he's not going to lie as an attorney and put the liability on himself if it, if it is not real. I mean, you know, uh, okay, fine. But like, and I'm not hating on it because it's been a stunning trade and everything. But, you know, like at this point, it would be really nice if these guys would put some shit on some company jun fahang letterhead and and then put it out for consumption from for north american audience well, that's as opposed I'm... as opposed to like mystery videos that have to be like dug out of a out of a secret internet mine and shit but, but that's what i'm saying exactly is why don't we as a group i have his personal cell phone and his email why don't we just all email him and request since he's speaking on the behalf of the company and he's posted this letter to the website. We all request transparency, and we want a letter from the company as shareholders. Well, why don't they do it though? Like what you know, the, the Chinese owners? Yes. Like what? Like well, why do we have to do I all the work? Know. Maybe they don't speak English, and they're using him right now. I mean, I don't know. That's the question. I don't know. It's 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 fascinating. But he. But what I'm saying to you is, I've talked to the transfer agent four times personally, okay? They told me, Yona told me, Eric is the company's attorney and representative right now. The only person in the U.S. that can speak on their behalf. And he All right, thank you. We have a new requester here. Thank you, Stock Awareness. All right, here we go. We got Sergeant Skeeter. Hey, uh, real quick, hold on. Uh, Stock Stock Awareness tweet or put a post out in the comment thread of the contact information. I'll try to contact him for fun. Appreciate All right, it. thanks, Stock Awareness. Sergeant Skeeter. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? What the fuck? Uh, he, mute, he muted his channel no, again. No, it's good now. Sergeant Skeeter. Go unmute. ahead, unmute yourself there, Sergeant okay. Skeeter. You guys hear me? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Um, yes. I, uh, I've been invested in IGBK when it was still a cannabis company, um, and I've been following it pretty closely since the uh, merger announcement at the end of uh, November, early December. I think what uh, a lot of people here are concerned about is when the company is going to post uh, official updates. Um, one thing through my research I found is that the uh, cannabis is illegal in China. Um, 
and they're also very prideful of their name. Uh, you guys can see through their releases on WeChat, they're very, very prideful of their company. Um, I think what we're seeing here is that they're waiting for this March 28th date to post an update. Um, I'm guessing they they themselves have some hard dates when FINRA is going to be approved so they can actually change the name. I really believe that this company does not want to make any official announcements under the IGBK name that contains cannabis anywhere. Um, I really think that they don't want any sort of backlash. It, it, exactly. I think I think they really are trying to reserve as much as possible. I, I think a lot of the accesses and stuff are probably already approved and ready, but they're really just waiting for a name change so they can move in this company uh, with their JFH name and they, they don't have to deal with any of the half-assed PR releases. Um, that's just kind of my opinion. I know a lot of other people in the uh, the Wales Discord chat agree. Um, I, I think that's what I think they're just playing insider baseball. It seems like a pretty legitimate company. Uh, they're they're just lining up their bases. Uh, another opinion I have is since they are so big, they seem pretty well established. I wouldn't be surprised if they drop an audited report for the end of year. Um, that's just kind of my opinion through my research. Uh, th th these guys seem to be doing it right. Um, Another one I've been following is uh, ABQQ, and they've just been, it, it's almost been odd how, how you know, outward they are, uh, you know, it's kind of like hourly posts at one point. I think IGBK is really biding their time and really soaking up as much as that time so they can kind of disperse, you know, a massive update for their end of year. And it's just going to, it's going to be gangbusters. Uh, but that's just my opinion. I'm not sure if I'm a crazy hopeful, but but did you drink I, the kool-aid i definitely have i definitely take a sip every day um but but they definitely they definitely do it, it's definitely interesting to research this company and uh there's been really no rebuttal negative dd it's been the the negative dd has really been when are they you know where's their update um there's been no counter of, hey, this is false, this is false, this is wrong, uh, which is, it, it's really, it's really odd and it's really exciting. But uh, that's, that's all I got to say. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Thanks for popping in. Appreciate it. All right. Who else we got here? Somebody's requested. Sir Man Stock Awareness again. No. <laughs> hey, all right. Jesus. Here we go. We, we, we do want to encourage other people to speak. Go ahead. Well, I was just saying, uh, you wanted me to post that. I've never posted anything. Are you talking about on the comment? Do I click on the comment? Yeah. Yeah. Click on the comment button on the bottom right and it opens up the chat or the like post associated with this space. And you can put the information right there so everybody in the space can okay, see it. Okay. And I'm going to speak to one thing you said just to confirm even further. We actually, I think I said this one time before, but we have a guy that lives in that city where JFH Digital is, and we put him on the ground, and that is completely true, and I didn't even think about it until he said it, about the marijuana. Uh, that is probably oh, yeah. a good reason. Like you said, he doesn't want the they don't want the backlash until the name actually changes. Dude, the CPC is not a joke. Oh, no, no. Over there, you go to jail and all kind of stuff. And and that guy, yeah. I mean, the CEO of that company, I don't know how much y'all researched him personally, but he definitely doesn't want anything like that to happen to him in China. No, they'll take his whole family I mean, they, out. They're not. They don't play around. It's, it's horrible. Advocate. Like, if this was is truly the reason, why would they have picked this shell to begin with? Well, that's why, yeah, but if you throw in the fact that they immediately told them, and Gene actually confirmed this, they wanted them to take the entire weed business out immediately and also all the clothing and everything to do with it, you know, preferred debt, every, they didn't want anything in there. Nothing. It's just kind of making me uneasy for some reason. I, the I don't know why. The point is, he's making. He could have got another shot. I don't know why. Could. That's what he's Most trying to of say. Some are nasty, though. I mean, they're. It's hard to find one like the completely. You can wipe it out that quickly. That. I mean, I go. I show shells to people all the time. I don't know if ever, anybody else does, but it's hard. It's yep, hard. I have access. Yeah. Yeah, I have access to shells. It is a dirty business. I mean, there used to be an entire ecosystem of people that were in the shell business, like Sheldon Shelley Craft or whatever. And I mean, I can name like ten names, but the whole point is uh, they're far and few between. But now that the that OTC markets has been cleaning things up, tightening uh, restrictions and stuff like that, making people become fully reporting. Or, you know, it's it's um uh, it's been a little bit of a different playing field since then. For sure, get your request in this button, then we can get it going. I don't know if anyone's been watching that RSCI. I was 
talking about it, you know, 0.2, 0.3, $1.50 today. Um, now they're talking about NASDAQ uplist, and they don't need a reverse split and uh, to do it. It's OSCI? Or, RSCI. I even said around like 0.7, like what, what are you going to do now? Like it's broken a decade's worth of resistance. They're going to uplist to QB next month, and then uh, they're putting in the NASDAQ application, and they don't need to do a reverse split to, to uplist. The, the share structure is already good enough. So, I mean, this could get bonkers, like like Zevo did or, or Arth or, or KRBP did. Like, just, I know it's hard up here. I understand. Like, it's hard for me to even say, yo, you should buy this, whatever. But I'm just, just fair warning that it could get wild. I have some of this. No, no, not a bad trade so far. Been great, eh? Yeah, been great. Uh, in terms of Nasdaq, I mean, they have the share structure, but they still need to, to, to go to four bucks. Yeah, the, well, that would be fine. They could do that, I mean, on their own without the RS. I agree. Yeah, they could easily do that on this on this structure. So they could they could get to that price. And then, you know, and, and with the, sh- the structure, if they don't dump on it, they could just it, they could just do it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Because they split yeah. a while ago. Yeah, they could. Yeah. Hey, guys, while we're in the middle of this, if you could share this room. I mean, we're only going to be on here for a little bit longer, but... Uh, Share this with other traders or investors because we are building a community where you can get hot due diligence right here. Uh, There's a lot of people that have a lot of experience, and we're we're about bringing truth to the surface, helping people understand how to find truth in what they're looking at as an investment. And we're not trying to tell you to buy or sell, but we're definitely trying to help you from blowing up your account because we ultimately all of us want to see more liquidity in OTC markets. And see people making great trades. So thanks for being part of the community, guys. And if you have a chance, go ahead and share this. I tell you, I really I really fricked myself on this ODII yesterday. You know, so they, they're a semiconductor manufacturer and announced that they're getting bought out. And the assets are getting bought out. And that, you know, the deal will kind of happen around like, what, nine cents, Cheeto? And, but they, yeah. Kept, yeah, they kept the deal open where they have 20 days to shop it and you know they're they're producing those gan semiconductors which are faster than silicon just way more expensive and you just wonder if like maybe there'd be a bidding war and the ceo restructured his debt at 0.1 even though the deal's at 0.089 so i just I, i just i don't know and i was about to just take the loss and eat it and then i was like i don't know you know maybe they're cooking something up we got a new one here. We got, who is that? CMC. We disappeared. Do it again. So anyways, I, I, I fricked myself, but I also, I, I, I'm not quite ready to take the loss yet because I just think we got 20 days here. And I mean, a big semiconductor manufacturer could pop up and start a bidding war. Then what? You know? I, I want to bring something up. Um, Jonathan Vega in the, I, I, do we still call it a tweet anyways? Um, tweeted in the channel uh, RSCI, not, you know, he already told me I'm retarded. <laughs> Go ahead. RSCI, not, uh, yeah, somebody was wanting to talk about PSRU or TMGI. If anybody has any information on that. I don't. I don't know. There are two really bad ones, as far as I'm concerned. I can't stand these, these nonstop delusion things. I mean, that's, it's grotesque, some, some of these. So I guess Tyler is a bag holder and he really wants to know any information we have on that. Yeah, I realize TMGI now lowers the AS. I mean, to what number is the question, right? Because they, it's at 50 billion right now. If he, if if they lower it to 10 billion, I mean, it's still bill, eight uh, billion uh, to to sell. It's they just sold and sold into every single news, everything uh, in the last few months. Um, if they stop now, okay, then it's a different situation. But um, I, I, it's tough. HMBL, wow. Yeah, that stock is one that has gone down for a while. But he's saying that he wondered if it's a – they've announced some type of a blockchain platform uh, or wallet, so to say. And if if you own a wallet, it also gives you um, the ability to chat in this uh, ecosystem of people that own the wallets in like a social media platform. And I looked into it. It looks interesting. Uh, I'm not sure – what's going on but they're getting some huge connections with the american football league and a few other things 
to really get some exposure for it. But the stock, it's been around for such a long time, and it's it's really been hammered. So does anybody have any news or updates on HMBL? You know, I mean, we got to – I hope it works out for anyone who's stuck in it. As far as, like, the question <laughs> – the question for me is to – you know, the question ultimately is, for me, would I look to open a position in it personally? Probably not. But obviously, I remain hopeful for anyone who's in it that they that they do find relief. But I mean, the probability of that happening is is. So what if they aren't in the stock holding a bag and they're looking at making an investment in it now? I would say I mean, don't, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a few friends that did. Well, did they speak? To you first or hold on hold on cameron's talking he was trying okay. to figure out what okay so he's saying they're on to something that's about to start generating revenue and he doesn't know how um it might affect the stock that's been beaten down that bad good question you know um i'm not looking at the share structure at this moment but i think they have a lot of shares out if i'm not mistaken can anybody yeah. else confirm the share structure real quick yeah i'll tell you right now what it is it crashed my computer there just trying to pull it. No, this is a, these are jokes. Come on. 11 billion. <laughs> I pulled it up. 11 oh. billion. Yeah. Billion. So, and how many shares is it trading on average right now? So we can get some reference. This is the, now we're getting into the, here we go. It Today it did 24 million. Okay. So look at this from this perspective, you got 11 billion shares and all it traded was 24 million shares today. You know, it's going to take, you remember when the entire country of Canada shut down from all the truckers going through? They were like, screw this, we're, we're on uh, a strike. Well, it's going to take something like that to move this stock is my point. It, 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 would, it would honestly be a, an, an act of God that would move it and nothing short of it. But I do like what they're doing. I mean, when I was looking into it, I believe uh, Jojo Britt was talking to me about HMBL. He's probably the one that got you on it too. Joe Britt was sharing all the information. I looked it up. It's really cool. It's just a shame they're in that vehicle or, or that, you know, underneath that traded symbol. If there was a way for them to get a different shell or a different vehicle and put everything they have into it, that would make a ton of sense. Yeah, absolutely it would. All right, we got another requester. It's stock awareness again. Y'all got to get your requests and people want to tweet things. They say, hey, I never get anything seen. We want to get it seen. All right, stock awareness. We're going to try. Here we go. Shit. Can I yeah, push buttons today? There we go. Jeez Louise. <laughs> the moment. New D. What's up with it? It's a reverse merger that's underway. And, you know, it, it, it's, it struggles to be liquid because I don't know why, but uh, it, it's a reverse merger that's underway with a uh, self-storage investment vehicle. Um, they're looking to close it soon. Um, it's, it's a very good setup, but nice. like everything else out here, um, it, it's, it's very, very tough to maintain momentum. That's the volume in the OTC at the moment, right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's tough. Like, cause even IGPK, that's good volume, half a million bucks. It's good. But like that half a million bucks in one place means there's nothing anywhere else. And half a million bucks, even by like, pre-COVID standards really isn't a lot. So, you know, it's it's just we're just in a weird place right now in terms of in terms of liquidity and continuation and volume. And and interestingly, you know, the the day after Tsai got robbed, there's been almost no volume since because I, I think people don't realize how many people were holding that and waiting for it to become the next they thought the next TSNP. You know, like hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of thousands maybe update on noom d guys who's up next it's a really good looking merger really good all right guys we're running on about an hour here so far it's been a really great space if there's a few more people that have hands up by all means let's do that or we'll try to keep this one to under an hour and a half yeah yeah we'll, we'll kind of look to look to keep it around an hour an hour and a half so if we aren't getting a lot of requests we can cut it and, and then keep these going so we can keep people coming in and keep the energy up because I, I really, really like, uh, you know, people always say to me, they say I'm tweeting and I feel like no one can see it anymore. I feel like, you know, whatever it is. And, and so it, it's nice to have this kind of person to person focused contact because uh, it's, it's tough to get seen lately for sure. That, that brings something to mind guys. If you see people in the room that 
you want to connect with, by all means, follow them. Make sure you follow JRC Stocks and OTC Method and Shido. I mean, we're going to be continuing to do these spaces and continuing to build out this community. And if you tag us in a due diligence post um, that's not spammy or messed up, we'll be happy to share that. And we're trying to build some awareness here. And it takes a community to do that, not just an individual. It's not a one-man army. So by all means... Let's connect together and continue to grow this. Um, if you have questions, bring them to the table when we have these calls. If you have a hot stock, bring some due diligence, man. Don't just be pumpy. I mean, I really appreciate everything we've had on here today so far. Um, is there anybody else that has a stock they want to talk about real quick before we close out this space tonight? Final. I, uh, Joshua, I, I, I want to I wanna hear your take on the G, um, uh, GMGI. Um, well, I've got I've got a lot to say about it. They put out financial numbers this morning, and yeah, I saw that. That that's what I mean. Yeah, what's what's your take? Well, um, they had an obscene amount of uh, quarters in a row with revenue growth and profit pro profitability growth, and all of a sudden, for the last two quarters or so, they've been dealing with um, fees that that made them non profitable, like paying for the uh, audit to be done on um, the company that they're acquiring, uh, Meridian Bet, and they had to do the audit twice. So it took a few hundred thousand dollars to get all of the auditing done. And they, so it made them not profitable for those quarters. Uh, but finally, this quarter, they're back to operating with a profit and with an increase in um, revenue again. So they're right back at it. They did over 11 million in revenue this quarter, and that doesn't include money that Meridian Bet has made this quarter. I expect that on the 19th, in fact, I know for a fact, so I can say this, on the 19th in five days, there will be an approval for the acquisition because the CEO has all the voting rights. So nobody's really gonna stop that. And within a week and a half from that date, They're going to have both companies, all the documentation done, and the acquisition will be finalized. So we'll see a company go from doing $11 million in a, a quarter to doing substantially more. I think combined, they're projected to be at over 27 EBITDA and be doing over $135 million a year in revenue, operating at like a 52% margin. So we're going to see some astronomical growth out of the stock. And as far as the valuation goes, um, they should be trading somewhere. And I'm, I'm being very conservative with this, not pumpy in any way. They should be trading far north of $7 a share, um, probably eight or nine roughly. And that's just from a regular evaluation. Um, so... Check out the stock. You know, GMGI is, has been quiet. They're going to come back on for another space. They're, the CEO of Meridian Bet is going to set up a space with us on JRC Stock Talk, and we're going to have a lot of information. They have 1,100 employees. They have a ton of locations, a sports book. They're in a ton of countries. So they're, it's a massive operation, and they're operating – profitable just like gmgi is it's it's almost right. unheard of in the gambling market that's exciting kona house go ahead hey first time call here but um i just appreciate you taking my my uh, questions igpk i'm hearing murmurings of concern that when they come into the shell that they do a reverse split but it's not only really occur when it's a startup company versus something like this is much bigger You know, uh, I'm going to tell you the, the truth here. Um, for the most part, and this, and, this, and this is something that people need to be aware of, um, oftentimes the more real the company is, the more likely a reverse split is. You know, it, it, that's just the fact of the matter because it, it's, it's very, very difficult for a company to, to raise capital if the stock is already congested with thousands and thousands of people that, that have been holding it since trips and God knows what. So hey, that's hey, not hey, to say. Um, can I get you to comment on this, what he's saying also? Don't you think the share structure is too low for them to do that? Well, let no. me finish my point. Yeah, go ahead. So, so what I'm saying to you is that that is a possibility. There's absolutely no way that you can, you can avoid Uh, that possibility existing and, and no amount of, of secret 
Chinese websites or anything is going to change that. You need to keep that in mind as something that may or may not happen, but know that it is absolutely a possibility and, and something that you should keep in mind when you're managing risk and and thinking about oversizing because because you're you're in an echo chamber where where everything is great. That's that's my advice to you. And and in being at this for ten years now with these, um, you you need to be prepared uh, for that possibility. That doesn't mean that it's going to happen. That doesn't mean it's not going to be a great run. That doesn't. But you need to be prepared for it because it it's it is always a possibility with a reverse merger. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the information. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And OTC. Sergeant Skeeter, also, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So both of you stopped at the same time. All right, let's run that back. Uh, go ahead. Sergeant Skeeter. Hi, just to uh, rebut on the uh, reverse split. Um, I don't think they're going to be reverse splitting. Um, couple, couple reasons why they've been, so on what I said earlier in the space, you could tell that they're strategically not aligning themselves with the IGBK name, but they're also doing a lot of PR in China, uh, alluding that they're going to be listing on the 28th. And part of that PR has been they're selling the idea of this token program. And they've been, and their token program that they've been talking about, the numbers, aligns uh, very, uh, very well. Or oh, how do I formulate this? They, they've been throwing out figures in, in yen uh, to how much these tokens are going to cost. And they're roughly the same price as IGBK's current stock is. Um, so I don't think they're going to be doing a reverse split based on that. Uh, the other item is uh, people typically do a reverse split to kind of uplist. Um, uh, that's typically what you see on some of these larger companies. Uh, some of the earlier PR releases in 2022, they talked about um, wanting to eventually uplist and become worldwide. Uh, so I, I see them going NASDAQ, NYSC type of exchange. Um, and I think they're with their current share structure with, you know, their proposed, I mean, that $7 billion company valuation was based on an article in 2022. So we don't even know what they're valued at. Um, all right. They, yeah, absolutely. So, so you think it's not possible? I, I think it's definitely possible. I, I yeah. just think what they're, what they've been putting out for PR. I don't, I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's anytime soon. We'll see. Like I said, it, it, you need to, I'm not saying it's going to happen and I know what it's like. Like I, I've said a lot of things are going to happen over the years and people get triggered by it and say, Oh, he's attacking us or whatever. I'm not, I'm just saying that it, you know, that, that company looks awesome, but I'm saying I, I've seen enough of these to know that you need to manage risk based on the fact that it is a possibility. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They, I, I public I, in Canada. When you speak on going public, they tried to go public in Canada, but the CEO uh, had a background that Canadians will not approve and did not approve, period. Right. Uh, yeah, so, we're really picky. <laughs> well, they don't allow any any anything over there as far as leadership. The other thing is, if you think about if they were going to do a reverse, maybe some defense to the fact that maybe they're not going to is they did issue the officer shares already, not only preferred, but also common. So that means they would reverse their own officer's shares that are already listed on that last, you know, queue uh, when they name the officer. So that might yeah. be a, a bet against it. Um, but I agree with him on the pricing, the yen. It does, it is relative to the current right. Um, well, I'm, like I said, we, we got to We got to I'm just, I know that I, I would feel a lot better to say that like, there's a lot of things that are being said, none of which are really on paper and none of which have been confirmed right. by the company. And that most of the time reverse mergers on things with share structures like that, that have a reverse merger do split, not to say that this will, but I I'm saying to anyone listening to me right now, if you're not managing risk effectively and considering 
that is a possibility. You're doing yourself as a, dis- a disservice. But if they do the split OTC, does it, the, 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 I mean, unless I'm wrong, the value of the money doesn't go down unless the share, share price goes down po- after split. Right. And that's, but it would go down from them raising capital. Well, yeah. By they selling do. shares. That, that's the point, right? Is that we can <clears throat> sell you a bunch of par value shares, dub one, and our stock's at $5 now, and you can unload into $5, or we can sell you par value shares, dub one, and right. you can sell into 0.01. And right. if there's one share structure change, retail's going to run away. You know what I mean? So right. it's a it's a tough it's a tough sell yeah. to merge a company in without a split. Not to say that it's going to happen, but I, I'm I'm telling you, you, you just got to manage it. You know, you 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 get in these chats. You want to take a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars worth because it's going to change your life. I'm telling you, size it down. Let me ask I've you. Seen a ton what's of these. your opinion, OTC, of the current move? How it move? It is moving slowly up. Do you think that's because of their uh, tokenomics over there they're pushing and it's actually the Chinese buyers that are pushing this up slowly or the American market? I'm assuming it's the American market and people like the future date of March 28th. And so that would be the other thing is, is if you have a good run up into the 28th, it might be worth, you know, sizing down a little bit because it might not be what you think it is. Wouldn't you think the jumps would be more aggressive if it was the American market than them uh, converting their coupons or whatever? No, to- I, no, I don't like. I can't. I can't be getting into this echo chamber. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I was just asking your opinion. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. OTC, okay. I OTC. I do want to say I completely completely agree with your risk ass- assessment. I completely agree with what you're saying regarding yeah. reverse split. I mean, not saying it's going to happen, but go ahead. <clears throat> no, no, you, you finish. Yeah, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but but I've just seen so many of these over the years. And, and you know, and and you get sometimes into this this where you only speak to people that believe exactly what you believe. And that's when you take the most shocking losses. You know what I mean? And so. Right. I, I just would like to provide a counterpoint and something to be aware of if, if you are oversizing and if you are getting swept away by the echo chamber, take it from me. I've seen it a hundred times and it's, it's worth ensuring that, that your life doesn't get ruined if that happens. Is there any numbers on Chinese mer- Like, is there any data that can be pulled on, say, for last five years on Chinese mergers and how many did or did or didn't? I mean, is that even possible? I mean, it's possible. And, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't really, I, I wouldn't find it worth my time because right. all I know is that you, you know, you don't know what this one's going to do. Right. No, I understand. Just, just some ahead, technicals. Please. Just if you look at the technicals and obviously I'm not saying they, they do reverse because this can be far off. Just, just look at the at the numbers. If you think they will list on Nasdaq on their own without a reverse split, then we are. Then if they don't add any shares at all from now on, we would we would look at the sixteen billion dollar market cap. Sixteen billion. If you think that's that that can be achieved, fair enough. Um, it's 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 a big number. And if you have a company coming in this that can force a 16 billion or 20 billion market cap, then they don't want to list on the NASDAQ with 4 billion shares. I Just just food for thought. What's the price of the stock it, to put it at that valuation to make that happen without a reverse? You have to be at 4 bucks to list at NASDAQ. You have to be at 4 bucks, no matter what. Right. There, there is some, there is some special uh, metric, financial metrics where it is in some examples possible with three bucks. I have never seen anybody list with three bucks, and I have seen a lot of OTCs uplisting over the last twenty years. So take four bucks. So then we talk sixteen billion market cap. If they don't add a single share from now on, you know, right. it's, it's if this is as big as as some think, then this could be possible, the, the, the valuation. But well, the company, would, if, they're, if it is their company and, and it is, you know, JFH Digital, I mean, they have the 
sales to back it for sure. Um, yeah, I but have, will, will they want to list with four billion shares? Yeah, I don't uh, know. <laughs> no, they won't. That's the question. No. So no, they won't. Just no. just to give everybody an update. They won't. <laughs> Um, the listing requirements for NASDAQ are a net income standard of at least 750000 in minimum uh, – wait, net income standard of at least 750000 a minimum public float of 1 million shares and at least 300 shareholders, and a share bid price of at least $4 per share. So if you run that down on IGPK, where are they lacking at? What about and there's also something about Same outstanding price. shares and floating shares, is there not? Um, says with certain exceptions, I didn't go into the full. I pulled it up from Nasdaq's website. Was that me going to the exceptions? Let me see if I can pull it up. So I just want to clarify the reason why I, I even said anything about uplisting in Nasdaq in. Uh, kind of so easily said the share price could be that high. So the only valuations we have from this company was a release in late 2022, and they valued themselves at 70 billion yen. And then there was an article, I believe summer of 2023, uh, that said they're doing $1 billion, uh, $1 billion in yen of sales a day. How that translates as income revenue, whatever, to, uh, to JFH, we're not sure yet because we don't understand yeah. we don't understand their business you know how much of that is going to their cuz they're like a reseller they're like an amazon so a lot of that a lot of that money is going back to you know the suppliers so 1 billion yen they could be getting you know some sort of percentage of that so that's that's why this end of year report is so important so we have a better understanding there, of there what is a is. google article skeeter i don't know if you saw on the ceo and they said uh, it's on bloomberg uh, that he's the 167th richest person in China. Okay. I have I have not seen that. Yeah, it's on. If you if you hit his name in Bloomberg, um, you'll you'll find it. It's not too far down. Thank you. I, All right. Well, well, let's move on from IGPK. Thank you guys. Yes. Um, good Thanks, guys. discussion for sure. Um, maybe we'll. I don't see any more requests, so maybe we'll wrap it. Thank you all. Uh, really good discussion and uh, anything on your mind hit hit me up hit up Josh we'll go from there let me wrap this up guys thank you so yeah. much for joining OTC stock talk we're gonna have a live uh, we're gonna create a video of the recording of this space and we're gonna post it on YouTube for everybody to share or go back and use for due diligence um, we had some great stocks mentioned tonight we had FLES BHPA GPFT K N O S. Of course, we had I G P K a number of times. A B Q Q, R S C I, O D I I, T M G I H M B L, N U Nail, L T C P Kegs, Noom D G M G I, and finally B I T C F. Guys, it's been a pleasure. I hope that you come back again soon. And if you have a chance, share this space. Follow our accounts. We do answer our DMs. And thank you so much. God bless you and have a good night. Good night.